Dan and I want to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. And as we go into the holiday season, it's actually going into the illness it season. It really is. And the number one day for heart attacks is Christmas Day. It is. And it starts with Halloween and goes through Thanksgiving holiday parties. And I'm sort of not okay with celebrating the birth of Jesus by stuffing ourselves with poisonous, toxic food. Well, and you add to that the stress of traveling, the weather change, the time change, which actually is a stressor, um, all of those things. And a lot of people aren't happy during the holidays because they're missing someone or they're grieving or there's something going on or they're worried about finances because it's insane, the commercialism. There's so many factors that go into the holidays being stressful. And if you think about where the idea of Thanksgiving started, it started with um, the pilgrims being thankful because they were hungry, they were struggling, and they they had this, you know, that was a day of gratitude for what they did have, and it's turned into instead this day of gluttony. And then it carries on through all of the holidays. And it's like, how did that happen? How do we, how do we switch from gratitude to gluttony? It's a good question. Wow. Right? So how do brain warriors do the holidays? And... Uh, you know, growing up for me, there was just, um, you know, my dad's a grocer. So we always had food and lots right. of it. Well, you're Lebanese. Let's just like lay it out there. I'm Lebanese. You're Lebanese. And every time I walk in the door, there's someone stuffing food in my mouth. You're too skinny. You need to eat. You need to eat. <laughs> Please. <laughs> By your grandmother, who's was way overweight, tall and 200 pounds way overweight and, and had diabetes, diabetes and heart disease. And yeah. Right. Right. You need, but that's eat. typical of that culture. Cause is. we're not thinking about giving the gift of health. And, you know, as I was looking at our core values at Amen clinics and brain MD recently, one of our core values, and you should ask yourself what your core values yeah. are for your home, for your work, for your church, wherever. It's live the message. Because mm -hmm. if you don't live the message, you suck as the messenger. <laughs> and, and I actually changed live the message to authentic. Yeah, Because what's authentic? If you're, a brain rule, if you're a brain warrior, you're armed, aware, and prepared to win this fight of your life. And one for of the life. biggest battles to for brain warriors is the holidays right right because now. it's three months it's not people think oh it's just a week or no it's like a three-month stretch of time and the problem with that is it's when you start it it then triggers this addiction cycle that becomes hard to break we get people kicked off of their sugar and it's like great we get them all like psyched and then it just it triggers that that cycle of addiction and it triggers like having the blues post holidays. It's like this whole thing we have to start all over again. And that's why I'm not a fan of New Year's resolutions um, because people, you know, studies show that within less than six weeks, people have given up on them and you just keep repeating a cycle over and over and over, which you're reinforcing now. Oh, I'm going to do this every year. We just want you to have a system for doing this all the time and be thinking you know, so what I want to do is give people a couple of tips. By the end of this podcast or this week, we want them to have several tips that they can use because if you do come from a family where food has been the vehicle that they celebrate love with, I want you to just think about that for a second. Um, food has no place being in the same place in your brain, using occupying the same space in your brain as your love for a child, your love for another person. But yet that's what we do. So if that's- Oh no, I've seen things online where one-year-olds- are putting their hands into cake and cupcakes, and then they're just slathered in it. And they're associating happiness with sugar and happiness. Well, it happens in our own family. We know that. food. Right. Oh, no. And it, it horrifies me when it does. But before we go on, do you have a review? Yeah. The and then we'll talk about the tips because I want to give people tips by the end of this week. So we have a we have a podcast here. I love this. I've already downloaded the Think Dirty app, and I'm amazed by the scores of the cleaning products that are targeted to all natural and green homes. There's so many. It's so great. I love listening to you both. I've learned so much, and I'm officially obsessed. I might need a scan for that. <laughs> keep up the amazing work and keep creating brain warriors. What you do is so important. 
I left mental health after 15 years because I just felt current strategies were ineffective and we were not treating the root of the issue. Your podcast, books, and knowledge rang true for me from the moment I heard it. Thank you, thank you, thank you from Valerie. Love that. Thank you so much. Well, we are so grateful. And if there's one thing you learned from this podcast, please um, post it on any of your social media sites, hashtag Brain Warriors Way podcast. You can also leave us a review or a question at brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and we'll enter you into a raffle to win one of Tana's cookbooks. And we're going to announce uh, a winner right. this week. So you have tips. Well, so you want to, the first thing is to be aware. Is, is your family one of those families where if you don't eat what's cooked and you don't clean your plate up, they're going to be offended. So you have to have a strategy for that, right? So um, strategies can vary. Um, you know, if you, for me, being very direct and just straightforward about it is is the best strategy, but not, that doesn't work for everybody. So learning how to say no, thank you and have a reason for it um, without offending people for a lot of, a lot of times that works. It's like, you know, I'm really working on my health this year. And if they continue on, it's like, don't you want me to be healthy? Like having something that you say in response, if it's because you- So we should role play this yeah. a little bit. Um, Cause I remember when one of my grandchildren was born, um, someone said, do you, cause I went over to help and someone said, do you want something to eat? And I know she didn't want to give me healthy stuff. And I said, no, thank you. And she said, are you sure? And I said, yes. And she said, well, are you really sure that you don't want something to eat? This went on for six times. And I finally gently said, why do you want me to eat something I don't want to eat? <laughs> And then it shut it down. Right. But because people are often socially anxious, right. they give in and damage themselves rather than set appropriate boundaries. Right. And we just had John Townsend on who's the author of boundaries. Right. And another thing you could say is, you know, I'm really here for the company. Like that's the thing I came for is I, I'm here for the love. I'm here for the company. I'm not here so for I'd the food. So I'd love to hear how you'd respond. So, well, people don't usually challenge me that I, much, but, <laughs> but my family does. My family don't does. Don't you want a piece of cake? Um, no, thank you. Are you sure it's really good? I, I know. I'm. I know it is, and I love. I would actually love that cake, but it doesn't love me back, and I'm really working on my health. But thank you so much. Everybody else is having it. I know. I'm here for the people, not the cake. But thank you. I'm going to go get some fruit. Low glycemic fruit. Right. <laughs> But I'm, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm going to come. I want to actually visit with you. But you're too skinny. You know, I guess I'm just going to have to be too skinny. I feel good at this weight. So you think you're better than us? Um, if that means I'm not eating cake, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if your idea of being better than is not eating cake, I guess you're going to have to deal with that. All right. Do it with me. Would you like a piece of cake? No, thank you. Are you sure? It's really good. I'm as sure as I can. Jackie spent all day in the kitchen cooking and making these goodies and these pastries and this cake, and she really wants you to have a piece. Weapons of mass destruction. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jackie spent a lot of time. Trying to kill us all. Trying to kill us all. So I actually had a funny thing. My dad was sick, and... Um, I put him on a gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free diet. And then my mom like spent all day making bread uh, for him. That's hilarious. <laughs> and, and I went over and saw that and I'm like, dad, she's trying to kill you early. I think she's got a guy on the side. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> my 88 year old mother. My point is, is if you want to do this, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you will find an excuse. That's just the bottom line. If you want to be healthy, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. Now, we aren't saying that people are perfect. We understand they're not perfect. If you're gonna have a bite of something, so what I, what I do is I have a three bite rule. If I'm gonna have something, first of all, we have a 95-5 rule. That's the first rule is 95-5. 95% of what we eat is, you know, Do our brain right warrior, thing. right, brain warrior strategies. The 
okay, we like, I'm not going to obsess about it, feel guilty about it. If I eat something, if I know I'm going to have something, I have it and I'm done and I get back on track. I don't sit there and go round and round and use it as an excuse to fail. Don't use it as an excuse to fail. And a three bite rule will keep you from totally sabotaging yourself and triggering that cycle of addiction. So Jackie's cake, if I decided nine times out of 10, I'm going to say no to it. And I'll tell you why. Because I frosting for me is crack. It's just my crack. So when I start eating frosting, it just starts this downward spiral for me. Now, if it were something else and it, I knew it wasn't that thing for me that triggers me, to, to just start my downward spiral. If you're an alcoholic, you're not going to go drink, right? You, because you know it's going to trigger you into the spiral. So if it were something else and I decided, all right, I'm going to I'm going to taste it. I'm going to have no more than three bites, not elephant size bites, but three bites, because that will not, that then it's like I've satisfied it. It's not going to be any more satisfying to go gorge. In fact, you're going to feel bad, but the three bites then move on. Then go get some, you know, fruit. So when we first started to help people with their weight, our first program was actually in 2009 and it was called Lose Weight Through the Holidays. And the week of Christmas for our group, the average weight loss was 2.5 pounds because you don't have to be sick in January. Right. And if you don't want to be sick in January, now's the time to start and you just want to have the right mindset. Um, and, you know, I mean, you can get well any time. I mean, I think doing it on January 1st is just sort of silly that you, when, when you get the mindset, I'm going to start now, not tomorrow, but today, now, that's when you'll really be a brain warrior. So I actually would like to show them something. In the cookbook, in the Brain Warriors Way cookbook, I have a, I don't know if you can see this. I have a, well, you probably can't see it. It's a Brain Warrior holiday meal plan. It literally goes through every step of how to have a Brain Warrior approved holiday with recipes and strategies. All the tips we're giving you, plus a whole bunch more ways for you to break your own cycle of addiction. If you're starting to feel like, okay, I want to eat healthy, but I'm feeling like I'm going to give in. Like, what do you do? How do you encourage your family and friends? How do you ha have them help encourage you? Like there's a whole strategy in here along with recipes, whole bunch of them that are beautiful, delicious, nutritious, and are not going to set you up to fail. So what's one thing you learned? The one thing I learned is you don't have to be sick in the holidays. What's one thing you learn? Post it on any of your social media sites, hashtag Brain Warriors Way podcast. Um, leave us a comment, a question, or a review at brainwarriorswaypodcast.com or a review on Apple or any of your podcast sites. Um, we are so grateful that you're with us. Welcome back. We are talking about gratitude versus gluttony through the holidays. Uh, which one are you going to show? Do you want to be healthy or do you want to feel miserable through the holidays? Uh, Christmas Day, number one day of the year for heart attacks. And there's a reason for that. It's because of all that we give into, all the bad habits that we have established The you know as a society, um, the culture that we live through with the holidays. So um, before and we- And we try not to do that. Because we try not to do that. We love ourselves. Yeah. It's about love using Thanksgiving or the birth of Jesus or holiday parties as a reason to hurt other people. Brain warriors, it just doesn't make sense to us at all. And, and one thing that's really interesting, um, we aren't perfect. It's not like we wake up and we're like, oh, every like we just everything we do is gonna be perfect today. No, it's a conscious choice. We have days where we don't want to do it. We have days where maybe we have a bump in the road and we make a mistake, but we consciously are aware and, and using these same strategies we're giving you to be healthy. So Olympic athletes are pretty perfect. 
And I want people to think you don't have to even do the 5%. It just depends on where you're at. You know, initially people go, oh, I do it right 80% of the time. Or if you remember mm. Bill Phillips' book, Body for Life, there was cheat days, right? I'm I not mean, a fan of cheat days at all. six days and then Sunday gorge and do anything you I want. I don't like that plan. And yeah, no, I'm not a fan of that. Um, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has situations. But the more you do the right things, the better you're going to feel. So I have a podcast review that's actually very interesting. Good morning. I listened to your talk about our skulls being too small. I am faculty in the animal science department at a community college just north of Boston. For years, a condition called syringo, syringomyelia has plagued Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Your one favorite. of my favorite. <laughs> well, no, white shepherds are my favorite, <laughs> but <laughs> I bought a King Charles Cavalier for my parents, and they just adore Vinny. It is the issue where the skull is too small due to selective breeding and the brain does not fit. The ramification for these dogs are excessive scratching at the neck, pain, and seizures. And as soon as I heard your podcast, I had to comment. I thoroughly enjoy your podcast. I participated in your weekly webcast several years ago on Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. Getting rid of the ants has been a game changer for me. Thank you both. Carol W. Lynn from Massachusetts. Love that. You know, I actually heard about, I've heard about this for a long time with dog breeding. Um, I believe that's one of the problems with Dobermans too, because we had Dobermans when I was growing up. We had Dobermans and Shepherds. And um, and I love them. And I'm, two of them were amazing and two of them were just completely psychotic. So, um, and none, no training, no love, like they were never beaten. They just went a little crazy. And I had heard that that was a problem with Dobermans too um, for certain breeding lines. So yeah, it's well, an it's issue. It's so interesting. And wait, when you we get to Brain in the News next podcast, there is something that's just going to blow your mind, mm -hmm. very much like the small skulls yeah. causing lots of emotional problems. Okay, we're back to the holidays. We're uh, coming in to Thanksgiving, and we are thankful for all of you who listen or watch. And um, we're really grateful for our Brain Warrior community. Um, and Brain Warriors don't celebrate with food that hurts other people. Um, it it's just amazes me how people just don't think about that at all. Right. And one of the strategies that I want to give you for this podcast, we told you we were going to give you tips. So what I started doing when I first really got into changing how we eat in our home, um, it's not easy when you come from a, especially a Middle Eastern family or a Hispanic family or many different cultures, they celebrate Italian with food. Italian family. Right. They celebrate with food, right? We, we know that. Southern family. <laughs> so pretty much most families. So um, I knew it was going to be challenging at the holidays. And so I started trying to figure out what I was going to do. Because when we go to those places, now, interestingly enough, there's plenty of food now when we go. Because several of your siblings now, like your sister grows her own produce. Like she, a, a beautiful, beautiful salads that she brings and fruit plates and gluten-free stuff. It's gorgeous. Uh, but that wasn't the case when we started. And so I started bringing my own because I, it does two things. I started bringing two or three things, two or three dishes that were gluten-free, dairy-free, low glycemic, um, and they were healthy and they were tasty. And it did a couple of things. Number one, it gave me, us, something to eat. Number two, it served as an example that healthy food doesn't have to be miserable, that eating healthy at the holidays, it can still be beautiful, it can be tasty, and I'm going to set that example. It starts with you. So you beating other people over the head doesn't generally work. You living as an example and bringing food to them and giving this as a gift, giving health as a gift is generally a lot more effective. So you have to live it. If you don't live it, you can't give it. And when we did the Daniel plan, I came up with this phrase, get it, get the information by listening to the podcast, reading the Brain Warrior's Way book, getting the cookbook, um, get this information. And then you have to give it away. Why? Why? Because it's in the act of giving 
that you get to keep it because by creating your own support group makes it more likely you're going to stay on the program forever. And so... Right. And sometimes you find yourself in precarious positions. So I ended up being hosting a party, a birthday party for an 18 year old. And this group of people had never been exposed to the way we eat. And it wasn't really the time for me to, at an 18 year old's birthday party, the time for me to like lecture everyone and do everything my way. So what I did instead, because you find yourself in those positions and you're like, well, I'm just, I'm, it's too awkward and I'm not going to make it miserable for the person I'm throwing the party for. So here's what I did instead. We still live, you know, our message. I, I made burgers, but I made grass fed burgers. And then I had the option of the bun or lettuce wraps. And the person who was, who was in charge of bringing desserts, of course, brought cupcakes, but we had gluten-free, dairy-free, low glycemic brownies, which are in the cookbook. So as an option. So my point is, is if you can't make it perfect, do the next best, best thing, you still be the example and you have options. Well, let's talk about um, healthy food. So you can cut up veggies mm -hmm. or get a veggie tray. Right. You can have guacamole. Mm -hmm. Salsa. Salsa. Hummus. That people like these things. I have a, I have a recipe have for- You cut up low glycemic fruit. Um, you make an amazing turkey. I mean, your turkey- On the cover is, is cupcakes. Awesome. <laughs> there's cupcakes, there's brownies. Right, there's... But, but still, even with those, you, you don't want them to be the staple. You want no, the vegetables No, but literally there's, there's the less, do you know there's less sugar? Those are lower glycemic than the salads? Because know, of the tomatoes. That interesting. Yes. The tomatoes are actually- They're, they're not, higher glycemic. They're not high glycemic. But they're higher glycemic than the desserts in this book. So my point being, it's not impossible to do. Um, there's a recipe in there for one of my favorites is the basil pesto. Um, there's there's so many things you can do that make it tasty and doable um, and and just really healthy. And it's you can do spa water with watermelon and mint and blueberries um, for parties. That's what we do. The spa water is really popular. Yeah, and, tastes good and it's and beautiful. And there's like no calories. One of the things food. that makes it work is it is is just the aesthetics. Whenever something is really pretty, for whatever reason, it is people associate it with tasting good. So it, right there, people, they're interested, they're attracted to it. So um, there are all sorts of different flavored uh, sparkling waters. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just adding a little bit of liquid stevia can mm -hmm. help it. So again, no calories. Um, I just want you to think, you you can get well quickly with this one simple tip. You just need to find 20 foods you love that love you back. And so I love guacamole. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can't have like a ton because it's fairly calorie dense, but it's good for you. It tastes good. And yes, you could do it with potato chips. That's not good for you. Tastes good, not good for you. Or you could do it with celery. Or you could do it with carrots, or you could do it with cauliflower, or you could do it with broccoli, or you could do it with orange, There's, yellow, you can make kale red, chips. It takes green like, bell pepper. It literally takes very little time to make kale chips. And uh, again, loving food that loves you back uh, is just so important. Love it. So we would love to hear from you if any of these tips have helped you, which tip you liked the best. If you have tips for us, also leave that. Leave us your questions and comments. You can go to Apple Podcast. You can go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and leave us a question or a comment. We want to hear from you. And we will enter you into a raffle to win the cookbook, the one we've been talking about with all the great recipes for the holidays. Welcome back. This is our weekly Brain in the News. There's so many articles uh, about Brain in the News. But if you learn one thing, post it on any of your social media sites, hashtag Brain Warriors Way uh, podcast. Uh, leave us a comment, question, or review at brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and we'll enter you into a raffle to win one of Tana's cookbooks. Um, so what do you have? 
So apparently more Americans are going to be going gluten-free whether they like it or not <laughs> because, because U.S. winter wheat acres are set to drop to the lowest in 110 years. Apparently we So the farmland dedicated yes, to wheat is dropping. At the lowest level since 1910. Yes. Wow. Because um, there's so much competition and the prices are so low that the farmers can't really afford to grow it. And so they're switching to corn and a lot of them are switching to cotton, um, sorghum, all sorts of things, but not wheat. And so it's very interesting. Um, but when they switch to corn or soy, which is a common, which is commonly what they're saying is going to happen, um, that's not necessarily super healthy either. So just be aware of that because a lot of it is still, it's not organic. It's genetically modified. It's sprayed with pesticides. So you still need to be aware just because you're going gluten-free does not necessarily mean you're going healthy. So gluten-free and health are so not. important. Yeah. And I talked to the author of uh, Wheat Belly mm -hmm. and he said gluten-free foods are often worse. just as toxic yeah. or worse because they're made with high glycemic Starch. starches mm -hmm. and so on. Um, all right. So I read this article, just blew my mind. I actually didn't know. Um, the title is No One Believed Him When He Said He Hadn't Been Drinking. Then researchers found his body was producing alcohol. That's crazy. When a man in North Carolina was pulled over on suspicion of drunk driving, police didn't believe him when he said he hadn't had any alcohol. The man in his late 40s at the time refused to take a breathalyzer test and was taken to a hospital where his initial blood alcohol level was found to be about two and a half times the legal limit and the equivalent of consuming 10 drinks an hour. Despite the man swearing up and down that he hadn't had anything to drink, doctors didn't believe him either. But researchers at Richmond University Medical Center in New York eventually discovered that the man was telling the truth. He wasn't downing beers or cocktails. Instead, there was yeast in his gut that was likely converting carbohydrates in the food he ate to alcohol. In other words, his body was brewing beer. <laughs> the findings were reported in a study in the British medical journal, Open Gastroenterology. The man whose identity has not been revealed had a rarely diagnosed medical condition called auto brewery That's syndrome, crazy. ABS, also known as gut fermentation syndrome, which occurs when yeast in the GI tract causes the body to convert carbohydrates ingested through food. So if he has this, a low-carb diet would help him into alcohol. Well, in fact, <laughs> when we talk about people having um, having yeast, people talk about you know having yeast in their gut, and we treat it a lot. Um, and interestingly, in the past, that's always many doctors considered it to be nonsense. So obviously it's not nonsense. Um, but what you do is you do put them on a low carb type of diet. There's, it's a very specific type of diet you put them on. And one of the things you do, you cut out like all sugars completely because you don't want to feed the yeast. Researchers treated him with antifungal medications. And uh, Dr. Fahad Malik said these patients have the exact same implications of alcoholism. Whoa. The smell, the breath, drowsiness, and gait changes. Three years later, after his suspected drunk driving arrest, the man's aunt bought a breathalyzer to record his alcohol levels. She had heard about a similar case that had been successfully treated by a doctor. Um, isn't this so this interesting? Is wild. And the article just goes on and on. But, you know, I think if you Google auto brewer, brewery syndrome, you can learn more about it. It's the hidden reasons why that people suffer. You know, we're learning so much. We used to think that this yeast issue in the gut, a lot of doctors didn't really buy into it. They didn't buy into fibromyalgia. They didn't buy into Lyme. They didn't buy into so many things. And as we progress with science, we realize it, it, not buying into it was really just because they didn't know enough about it. Sure. You want to do this one? Police picked up a seven-year-old boy who was caught at school vaping CBD oil in Wisconsin. This is crazy. 
Um, and they, they, obviously this kid has seen an adult or someone else doing this. Um, a social worker with Child Protective Services picked up the boy from school and took him to a local hospital for examination. Doctors said he was okay. Authorities then returned the child to his mother. Um, apparently they did not file charges, but school officials said they threw the vaping device in the trash. And the concern is that kids are seeing parents do this at home. They're concerned about the safety. We've been hearing about all these people going into the hospital dying because of doing this vaping. Um, I think most of them had THC in them, but you don't know if kids are going to pick those up out of your, out of their parents' purses or wherever. That's nearly 50 cases, right? 50 deaths. And so the safety and, and cases reported in every state in the United States, the safety and integrity of students and families is paramount. Um, so obviously this is a national vaping epidemic. It's a, it's a concern around the country or the world, but when parents do this and they jeopardize their own health, that's bad enough. When you jeopardize your child's health or another child's health at school who may then use your vape pen, that's criminal. It's just, it's, it's just wrong. So you need so to be more careful. how old were you when you tried your first cigarette? Oh, I was forced to smoke a cigarette by a babysitter when I was four. That's in my new book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had, th there's a reason I never allowed oh, my daughter. You just got triggered. Oh, yes. There's a reason. There, why do you think my daughter never had a babysitter? That was just one of the stories. So, yeah. So you were four years old. I was four years old. And a lot of it is because of a lack of supervision. I think mine wasn't children, a lack of supervision. It was just a horrific, horrible person, a terrible human either being. Either lack of supervision or a terrible, or a terrible human terrible being. Role model. <laughs> so. I think I was about 11 and just choked my head off. Well, I was four. So obviously I choked. She told me that she would tell my mom I did some other terrible thing that I didn't do, but I was so scared that I. So she was an abuser. That's what abusers right. do. Um, but, you know, let's not forget children have developing brains that vaping is not good for your adult brain, whether it's vaping, caffeine, nicotine, CBD, whatever. And, and I want you to think your lung tissue is the most sensitive tissue in your body. It is one it's cell layer delicate. thin. And it's critical to you being able to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide, a process that's just absolutely essential to every cell in your body living. And so by heating up these pans and inhaling really hot, toxic, often air, that they're damaging their lungs. But there's also something else going on because I think by the time they inhale, the, the air is not actually that hot, but so there's something else going on with this chemical exchange. It's making it even more toxic than some of the other ways of smoking. So, um, I'm not even, I don't know. If, do you know that they know exactly what's causing it? I know it's mostly the THC pens that were doing it. They, they actually think it's an, a synthetic form of vitamin E that oh, okay. is causing people to have a negative reaction okay. to it, like an allergic reaction that's causing, um, one more study, uh, omega-3 supplementation for children was associated with parent-rated improvements in executive function. So they did this study on 95 kids with depression or bipolar disorder, and they gave them two capsules of fish oil, uh, about two grams total, mostly EPA, and the conclusions of the study that it improved executive function uh, when they improved the omega-3 fatty acids. So things like forethought, judgment, impulse control. Mm -hmm. This was published in the Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry. And I love that because that's a mainstream journal that's talking about using nutraceuticals to optimize physical cognitive functioning. Do you remember Abigail at our house the other night? Was so This is so cute. I've never seen a baby this young taking fish oil. Um, so one of our doctors that works for us, who we just love, he's in one of our just amazing physicians, they came to our house and he has a four-month-old baby that is just as cute as can be and one of the mellowest babies I've ever seen. 
wide awake, totally alert, mellow, doesn't cry. I'm like, something is up with that baby. Like she's just so well behaved for a four year old is not fussy at all. Um, but they give this baby, they're already giving her fish oil. They've been giving it to her since she was just tiny, just well, she's still tiny, but, but I was so amazed. They're already giving her fish oil and it's just so interesting and probiotics. And so you can start really young starting to optimize the health of that baby's brain. I thought that was so interesting. Wow. Right in the news. You know, we'd love for you to send us links to articles that you come across. You can post them at brainwarriorswaypodcast.com. We'd love for you to leave us a comment question or review. And if there's one thing you learned, and I think the thing for me this week is the auto brewery <laughs> syndrome, uh, be careful about feeding the yeast in your gut with sugar, um, that... Uh, we would love for you to post it on any of your social media sites and hashtag Brain Warriors Way podcast. Stay with us. Thank you. Welcome back. This is the Q&A section of our podcast this week. And um, we've been talking about the holidays and how to stay healthy, how to eat like a brain warrior and pass on the gift of health. But in this episode, we're going to answer some of your questions. And one of the reasons we love to get your questions and your comments is because it enters you in a raffle to get a cookbook. So we, this is the cookbook that you will get. And we've been talking about this, especially for the holidays. It not only makes a great gift, but there's a section in here on how to be healthy for the holidays. So for this week, the winners are uh, Sheila from Grand Junction, Colorado, Randall from Lake Wales, Florida, Valerie from Henderson, Nevada, and Natalia from Point Roberts, Washington. So congratulations. We are so excited. Thank you so much for sending in your questions and your comments. And to enter the drawing, all you have to do is leave a review on Apple Podcast, preferably a positive one. Um, go to our website and ask us your questions. Leave us your comments, um, anything interesting you have. And go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com. Visit the review page for details. It will explain to you what to do. Well, we're so excited. And there are lots of questions. Um, so the first one, what are your thoughts about the effects of violent video games Ugh. on the brain? Um, they wear out your pleasure centers. Uh, there's actually a great book about this by my friend Archibald Hart called Thrilled to Death. And it's the more you push on the pleasure centers, you know, when you blow up things, um, that ultimately you get depressed and it wears them out over time. These games can be addictive. They also decrease frontal lobe function, which means they're going to decrease your empathy. When you're used to killing, and, and the brain, I was talking to Chloe about this this week, because um, she did a very intense acting job. For two hours. And, and, and I'm like, the brain doesn't know yeah, she was the screaming and crying and between fantasy and reality. And I remember last night we were watching Poldark, which is a season we're watching, uh, a television show from PBS that we're watching. It's great. And a baby died. And I'm like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going but you to cry, but I cried <laughs> <laughs> because the brain has problems separating fantasy from reality. And so putting a developing brain in the middle of violence, just a bad one. Well, idea. and there's another book um, by Colonel David Grossman, and it talks about violent video games and how actually the military developed one of their first um, simulators based on a Nintendo, one of the one of the violent video games, because what they started to notice, they were actually studying school shooters and not just school shooters, but but active shooters that would these kids who had never picked up a weapon before, but suddenly could pick up a weapon, walk into a group of moving people. You know how hard it is to hit a moving target and hit them like in a dead on like with that perfect of a shot. And what they noticed was like, they're like, why? We have trained people, trained military, trained police officers, and it's not that easy to do. Why are these kids able to do this and they've never picked up a weapon before? Because they were spending hours and hours and hours perfecting it. And they were, by simulation. And so, and it also desensitized them. So they were being desensitized and perfecting it at the same time. And the military went, bad idea for them, good idea for us. And so they actually developed a simulation program based on it. So that should tell you something. 
can you do this one? Yep. So I am a 15 year old female diagnosed with hypothyroid 55. and 55. What did I say? 15. Oh, <laughs> cut. Okay. I'm a 55 year old female diagnosed with hypothyroid and then later diagnosed with Hashimoto's. I take levothyroxine daily that may be adjusted every six weeks based on the blood test results. What can I do to cure or relieve this disease and a few symptoms such as feeling cold most of the time and feeling sleepy? I'm in great shape. I am physically active and have recently dropped 15 pounds on Lindora program, um, which my endocrinologist told me would be difficult to lose weight. What can a person do to correct the brain to cure the remedy of the disease? Thank you very much from Elisa. Okay, well, that's something I know a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> so hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, I've been at both ends of the spectrum. I totally get this and it's miserable. I actually had Hashimoto's as well. Um, so I feel your pain. They say that, you know, having thyroid disease won't kill you, but it'll just make you wish you were dead if it's bad enough. So I totally get it. Um, especially the fatigue. If you're hyperthyroid, you can be wired, tired. Um, but I don't mean like a little wired and tired. I mean like like just miserable. You can't sleep at night and then you're miserable during the day. Hypothyroidism can cause depression. Um, severe fatigue, make your muscles ache. It's really bad. Your hair will fall out. So um, lots of problems with it. And hyperthyroidism will also cause your heart to race. So there's just so many problems that occur when your thyroid's not right. Every cell in your body needs your thyroid to be optimized. Let's put it that way. So good for you for getting it checked, following it, and going to a doctor. What I will say it's critical. I really hope you've researched this doctor and that this doctor's good because I've actually had two doctors that I thought were trying to kill me. Um, so in retrospect, yes, in retrospect. So I was never right. I just, I was so miserable. I just, I couldn't figure it out. And when I finally found the doctor I have now, I actually fly to San Francisco. Now I only have to fly up there once a year, thank God. Uh, but it was worth that just so that I didn't feel like I was dying all the time. So this guy was amazing. He finally got my medication right. Um, he checks everything and optimizes my T4, my T3, my TSH. I mean, everything, because I've had thyroid cancer multiple times. So really critical you go to the right doctor and that your thyroid levels are not normal. They are optimal. Um, as far as what can you do, that's really a complicated so one question. one thing that we actually found with Chloe's teacher is that when she got rid of gluten, it really well, especially if it's helped. autoimmune. If it really is Hashimoto's. You got to ask yourself, why is your immune system attacking? And there are a ton of studies online. You can actually read about the effects of autoimmune and gluten. So highly recommended. If your doctor's worth their salt, they're going to probably tell you that there's, you know, even Western medicine doctors now, there's so many studies on the effects of gluten and, high, and autoimmune disorders that you just got to pay attention to it. Um, so try it. Try going gluten-free for a couple of weeks and see what happens. And in the end of mental illness that's coming out in a couple of months, there's a whole section on autoimmunity and the brain yeah. and hormones and the brain and how they often will interact mm -hmm. together. All right. I have a question. I was wondering if you can do a topic on histamine intolerance and what is the right diet? I don't have it, but a friend of mine was recently diagnosed and was given a food list. I just want to know uh, from Rowena. Um, it is a real thing mm -hmm. and causes people um, incredible stress and physical symptoms, coughing, rash, pain, that going on don't they get a typically severe headaches healthy as well? diet, going on a typically healthy diet is actually not the right thing because as we implied earlier, tomatoes can cause excessive histamine release. Avocados, which we talk about all the time, which are really great brain healthy, but not if you have histamine intolerance. Wine. Wine. Yeah. Certain cheeses. Especially red wine. Uh, certain fermented foods. So there's a lot about it on online, but it is clearly yeah, we'd highly a real thing. You, and we'll think about doing a week on that. And we'd highly recommend you talking to an actual um, nutritionist for that because they actually have very specific diets. They can really help you walk you through that. Um, but it can give you migraines. It can give you all sorts of problems. Been enjoying the podcast. I found the nutritional ones informative, especially with Dr. Kidd as he answered many of his questions. Dr. Kidd said that Sammy was a really good supplement to take for mood. However, you also make serotonin 
mood support. Why would one take one over the other if Sammy's thought of that way for mood? Great question. From Mindy. Great question. And what, what I've found is that Sammy is really good to stimulate your brain. More like a dopamine so type of reaction, right? If you tend to be sad right. and tired and have brain fog and you need a stimulant, that Sammy is actually really good. It's also good for pain. And so if you have pain, tiredness, and a low mood, Sammy is good. So if you're one of our type fours, we recommend Sammy. If, however, you're a type three, which is worried, rigid, inflexible, things don't go your way, you get upset, Sam E can actually make you a little bit more worried and mm -hmm. more anxious. Serotonin mood support is to help calm the brain for the sadness that goes with worry and inflexibility. Yeah, I really like this question because if you listen to our podcast regularly, you heard the episode where I talked about when I was put on Prozac was not a good combination. And you had mentioned to me when we were dating and I got scanned, you're like, oh, I hope no one ever put you on Prozac when you were depressed. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because what happened was I suddenly became very impulsive and, and lacked judgment, right? I mean, it really was a bad, bad choice for me. Um, when I, for some reason, I decided to try serotonin mood support one time when I was under stress, I felt drunk. Like I literally felt drunk. Like I was walking and so then you I like realized- did that completely on your own without- I did. Yeah. Consulting. I totally did because I was anxious and I'm like, oh, maybe this will help. And then, I, and then I realized, oh, this is doing the same thing to me. I mean, I put it together quickly that this is doing the same thing, well, that same feeling thank that God I got. God didn't end up in Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> so it was making me feel the same way that Prozac made me feel. But when I took Sammy, e, I felt better. I felt like more aware, awake, um, energized, motivated, didn't feel anxious, felt good. I felt good. Yeah, no, I took 1,200 milligrams of our Sammy. And, and I don't really take it for mood because, as you often say, I have Mickey and Minnie dancing yeah, in it's, my head. Yeah, no. But I have arthritis uh, in my knees, and it just helps my knees so that I can walk four or five That is the problem. Day. That is why you're the way you are. <laughs> now I understand it. It's the Sammy. <laughs> Dear Lord. We are so grateful for you, you know, as we're coming at the end of Gratitude Week. Uh, write down three things you're grateful for every day. Within three weeks, you'll notice an increased level in your happiness. We are happy you are one of our brain warriors. Uh, what did you learn today? Um, leave a comment question or review on brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and post what you learned on any of your social media sites and hashtag brainwarriorswaypodcast. And we will enter you into our raffle to win the cookbook. Thank you. Happy holidays. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 Nine seven eight one three six three.